Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom came out a little over a month ago, and if you're anything like me, you've spent most of your time figuring out how to break the game. One of the first things people do when given a free-ranged building system in a game like this is try to rig up a few components and make a computer so that they can play the game in the game. Now, I am moderately nerdy, but I am also unfortunately stupid. So most of this stuff goes right over my head, and I won't be explaining a lot of this logic gate stuff correctly. So if you want to learn, which you should, go watch this video. This fantastic channel, Physics for the Birds, uploaded a video about making logic gates in Tears of the Kingdom. He goes into details about the different basic gates that would be necessary to make a Turing complete system. Now, of course, there is a build limit in Tears of the Kingdom because the Switch has far from infinite memory, but figuring out how to build the gates is going to be the fun part regardless. Having watched Physics for the Birds video, there were a few gates that I wanted to create. The and, or, not, and XOR. And if I make those, then that means I can make the half and the full adder. Well, I ended up staying up all night finagling with Zonite devices until I finally figured out how to make logic gates for myself in Tears of the Kingdom using electricity. And here's what I found. AND gate. I wanted to use electricity in the game to make circuits. Unfortunately, Zonite devices can't be powered with electricity, but I'm sure we can find other fun uses for it, especially since they gave us this battery that acts like a capacitor, and there are other fun, weird objects and shrines that we can use. So. Maybe we can make other stuff. When I was playing the game casually, I noticed that on Death Mountain, there are a lot of iron boards and blocks and poles, as well as a bunch of minecarts. And all of these things are electric, conductive, or whatever, whatever they say. Uh, con they're, they're conduct, they conduct electricity. <laughs> Unfortunately stupid. So my first thought was to use the minecarts as nodes, and I could use the rail to keep them straight. And then by attaching a minecart fused shield to a spring switch, I could set it up so that the circuit is complete only when both the spring switches are down. By the way, for the sake of the rest of these gates, the spring switches are zero when they're extended and they're one when they're depressed. Think uh, zero when open and then one when closed. The input that's closest to the power is gonna be the A, and then the one that's furthest from the power is gonna be B. And for the output, Zero is when no zappy, and one is when yes, zappy is present. This actually worked out pretty well, like, immediately. The logic was sound, I guess, but the build, it could use some work. See, I, I forgot that stakes were a thing in this game, and so I don't need the rails. And springs, um, they, they pack quite a punch when you uh, let them go, so... At first I was trying to weigh them down with some stone, but then that wasn't working, and I mean, look at that wobble, look at that. That's, that looks so unsafe. So I took a brief resource gathering detour, and I came up with a new design for the AND gate. See, this design uses less parts, and is actually made up of just two pieces, the nodes and the switches. Looking at it afterwards, I could probably simplify further by just using three minecarts and then two switches. but. You can see that by using stakes and switching from the metal cart shield thing to the horizontal iron poles, it makes a very satisfying and very consistent AND gate. I'll put these numbers on here to better visualize what's happening, but looking at this chart, we can see that when A and B are zero, the output should be zero. When A or B are one, but the other is zero, the output should still be zero. And only when both A and B are 1 do we get an output of 1. Boom. Or gate. Okay, so it's nighttime now. It's a little harder to see what's going on. But the or gate is actually really simple. It's just two minecarts around a stake for stability and a little bit of insulation. And then two switches on either side of it. You can see that from this or gate chart, that when both inputs are zero, the output is zero. If either A or B is one and the other is zero, then the output is one. And if both A and B are one, then the output is still one. Boom. Moving on.
not gate. This one introduced an interesting little dynamic. Here is the chart for the not gate. It's really simple, only requiring one input and the output doing the opposite of the input. So if the input is one, the output is zero and vice versa. And to make this in the game, all we have to do is introduce some height. By using two stakes and raising the card up, I was able to make a not gate fairly easily by just using two minecarts and a single switch. When the spring is up and at zero, the output is one. And when the spring is down and at one, the output is zero. Simple, clean, beautiful, moving on. To the NAND gate. This is something I ended up making on accident. <laughs> Turns out by raising a OR gate like a NOT gate, you end up getting a NAND gate. Following this chart here, when A and B are both 0, the output is 1. When either A or B is 1, but the other is 0, the output is still 1. But when A and B are both 1, the output is 0. Boom! NAND gate. This one is nice because it doesn't use many parts. More on that later. XOR gate. This is where I ended up spending a lot of my night. The haunted XOR gate. According to the Physics for the Birds video, in order to add two binary digits together to create what's called a half adder, I will need to create a AND gate and an XOR gate. Well, we have the AND gate figured out, so I thought I'd, you know, figure out how to make an XOR gate, then we just kind of put them together. It took me a second to wrap my head around it, so let's take a look at the chart first. If A and B are both zero, then the output is zero. If A or B is one, but the other is zero, then the output is one. If A and B are both one, then the output is zero. So basically, we only want the power to go through the circuit if the switches are in opposite positions. If the switches are ever in the same position, then the circuit should break. This is what I originally came up with. It's essentially two circuits wired in parallel. Since out of the four possible outcomes on the chart, there are two that result in an output of one, this gate has two sides that solve for either one of those outcomes. The left circuit completes if A is one and B is zero, and the right completes if A is zero and B is one. If both switches are in the same position, then neither circuit completes and the output is zero. This works okay, but it uses a, a lot of parts. In case you don't know, there is a 21 object limit on the amount of things that you can have attached together. And this includes attached on one single construct or just in the area around Link. So if you ever go over that limit, the oldest attachment you have will just detach. This wasn't really an issue in simpler gates, but this is when I started to run into it. I mean, in general, if things can just be propped up next to each other instead of attached, then they probably should be, but that doesn't always work out. So I had to get a little crafty with my resources, and I came up with this. Thing of beauty, ain't she? It's essentially the same thing, but with half as many minecarts, because the switches are connecting directly to the power and the output. Using the iron walls also gives me a nice output reading. And that's it for the exclusionary OR gate. Now, to make it a little bit more complicated, by sticking an AND gate to it, somehow. Half adder. Seeing as the most complicated part of the half adder is the XOR gate, we're most of the way there. I figured we didn't want to move the switches around and have to reorganize the XOR gate, so I basically just redesigned the AND gate to be the same thing, but kind of just out of the way. It's basically the same idea though, I mean, by adding a iron pole at a 45 degree angle on the first switch, we can position a minecart to only make contact on the down position, or the one. And then down the line, all of this is just added for space, we have another horizontal iron pole that completes the circuit, again, in the one position. Now you may be asking yourself, why is the second switch a horizontal iron bar and not just a vertical thing like the first one? Why, why, why are you wasting time with the steak? What's with all this? Well, the reason is that we need to insulate the AND gate from the XOR gate. And if the second switch is made of all metal like the first, then it completes the circuit incorrectly. And I, I think they call that a short circuit. 
This stake solution keeps the two gates separated. Speaking of two gates, let's add the X Orb one back. Okay, looks like I have to go on another supply run. And we're back. You wanna see me do it again? With some slight but notable improvements. Instead of the double-sided switches, I finally found some square walls that work perfectly, which saves us a couple of attachments. I replaced the stake solution with the mop solution. The reason being weight. The mop is light and long and non-conductive, whereas the stake weighed down the switch too much in the open zero position and it made it short out a lot. I also turned all the minecarts around so that the stake is inside making a little minecart mushroom because I found that the minecarts, when they're upside down, are more compact and make it easier to make contact with the iron poles. I had to add a battery to this shock emitter since the Zoni devices that are powered by Link will turn off if you walk a short distance away. This was a huge pain since this battery was literally the last attachment allowed. Like I'm 100% sure there's a better way to build this monstrosity, but at this point, it was like eight hours in and I just want a calculator that can add up to two. So here we go. We start with the A and the B both in the zero position. And coming over here to read the output, we have two zeros. Nice. If we hit the input A so that it turns to a one and keep the input B as a zero, the reading is zero one, which is one in binary, which means the machine can add to one. If we hit it so that the input uh, for A is zero and the input for B is one, the reading is still one, which means a baby isn't as dumb as it looks. Now, if we hit both the input A and B, so they're both one, the reading is one zero, which is binary for two. We did it! Let's go! I built a machine in Tears of the Kingdom that's as smart as a caveman, yes! But still, I think, I think this kind of proves that Tears of the Kingdom is Turing complete, or, or at least it has the capacity to be in an emulated form on a stronger PC with no build limitations. Conclusion. After a much needed nap, I am definitely going to keep going with this. I think the next goal is to simply add another half adder so that we can string them together and make a full adder. Even watching the footage now, I can already see a lot of room for improvement. Like I'm sure the more astute of you are asking, why did I run to each switch and hit them instead of just shooting them with an arrow? I don't know. <laughs> I, I didn't think about it. I designed the machine to have switches accessible to be hit, but, but I, I don't know why that was necessary. I definitely also want to have the power input and the readable output visible from the same location, which is why shooting switches would be smart. And that way we can use Link's battery more reliable. We don't need to attach a big battery to it. Also, allegedly, you can make a full adder and technically a Turing complete set with just that NAND gate that I found on accident. And like I mentioned earlier, it's not made of many parts. So I think that may be the best like route to go down in the future. Who knows? Anyway, that's all I have for you guys for now. Thanks so much for watching. I know this is like really different from all the other videos that I've made so far. And I've also been MIA for like three months, but hey, that's what you sign up for. See ya. <laughs>